I'm going to get into the MTT report and then I'm going to update everybody here on the KuCoin issue that's going on right now that everybody has to know about that's USA. Okay, some Canadians, I believe, as well, but USA. So let me share my screen and we'll go over the report first, which is the news. Uh, the news of the day and get you guys up to speed on what's going on. Okay, so if you've been with us for the last couple of weeks, and I know most of you have because I recognize the name, um, we've been going over the BlackRock issue and the EFT or the ETF. <laughs> let me let me rephrase that, the, ET, the ETF. Um, and we're going to get into that a little bit more uh, on this particular report. So I'm giving you, a, and we're going to continue to watch this for you every single week until it's over because it's big with crypto and it's big with Bitcoin and you need to know about it. So with the BlackRock update is that they announced just recently that Coinbase is going to be its U.S. surveillance partner. And when they made that announcement, uh, it spiked Coinbase stock 12%. So that's a good news for Coinbase for those people that have that particular exchange they're using. Uh, the news around the spot Bitcoin ETF has kept the Bitcoin market very bullish. They did not, they, they made a ruling on the spot ETF and they, the SEC did, and they didn't allow them. And so that was what was the recent drop, what we believe in Bitcoin was when that happened. But then uh, BlackRock came back and refiled it's EFT. And so that brought the market back up again and stabilized the Bitcoin. So, um, and then other platforms or other financial institutions are following suit like ARC, uh, who did a copycat of the new ETF that BlackRock has filed so that they kind of get it pushed through. So uh, there's a lot of news in this. So um, we're really wanting to make sure you guys understand what's going on with it. The Bitcoin dominance has hit a new yearly high of 52% and is largely due to the ETF news. So we keep an eye on the situation because it's big, because it matters, and because it will affect the cryptocurrency and most of the MTT coins that we're watching. So many of the largest financial institutions, a bunch of them, are now seeking to provide Bitcoin access. Uh, this is good news because all of these big investors are, are seeing that Bitcoin is now uh, seen as a, a, you know, a financial asset. And so they're adding it into their portfolios for their investors. So Fidelity has now refiled with the SEC for its, quote, wise origin Bitcoin trust proposed in 2021. So it's worthy to note that the SEC can reject all of these spot ET ETFs uh, that are being filed as they're discussing that it's not really clear in the paperwork enough on how they will manage these um, agreements and these ETFs. So it's very skeptical. And of course, you know, America doesn't really, isn't really fond of the cryptocurrency world, but um, with all of the financial institutions jumping on board, the good news is that these ETFs, our Bitcoin ETFs, uh, will be backed by Bitcoin. But now there's a catch with that. So we'll get into that in a little bit. But basically, and we'll get into that in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so I'll explain that. Uh, let's move on to the next thing. Uh, Gemini, uh, the platform Gemini is available to the United States. And in Gemini, the, uh, the co-founder of Gemini and president CEO, um, made a comment and he said, anyone watching the flurry of ETF filings understands the window to purchase pre-IPO Bitcoin before these ETFs go live. So uh, his name is Winkle Voss as well. Um, and he labeled it as the most obvious and best trade of this decade. So that's coming from the owner of this Gemini. And the, the Winkle Voss the two Winklevoss twins who own lots and lots of Bitcoin made their big money. Um, people should know that they they were struggling with their Gemini platform um, in finding uh, financial backing. So what they ended up doing was they invested a hundred million of their own money into their exchange. So that that's something to know about. They struggled with layoffs. They're cutting back operational costs and they're trying to strengthen Gemini's platform. But they believe in it so much they put a hundred million into it. So um, from what the looks of it, they're very pro on uh, the crypto field for quite some time. And Gemini is a good platform to look at. Um, Bitcoin, um, 
the LPH of Bitcoin, the long-term holders, you know who you are. They're the whales that hang on to these Bitcoin for a long time. It's just 20,000 shy of its all-time high of 14.49 million. Now that came from Glassnode. That was a report that they did a survey. Uh, 1.01 million Bitcoin over the past 602 days alone were purchased in our holding in the long-term holders. Uh, 2.4 million Bitcoin just between April and November of 2021 when it was nearly $70,000 a Bitcoin. So the long-term holders can be and can also be more aggressive in a bull run. So if we start running up the price in Bitcoin uh, and you start seeing more of these long-term holders grabbing more of it at the price that it is today and higher, um, then you'll know that you know Bitcoin can be around for a while. It's just it's a more of a confirmation as well. Uh, CryptoQuant uh, stated that the accumulation of Bitcoin has been on the rise, and they see it in their in, in institutional area where investors are and stuff. So they made that comment as well. Bitrix, if you're on that platform, you need to know that uh, read that that they're in court right now with bankruptcy proceedings. They're leaving the United States behind due to the investigations ever since 2017 and the SEC issues that they've been accused of listing unregistered securities. So Bitrix is going bye-bye from what I see from the USA. I don't know what their future plans are, but if you're holding that, that's the news that we're bringing to you. Uh, if you haven't heard about Bitrix and you've got coins on that exchange, I want to rethink what to do with them if you can. Okay, so here are the runners of the week. We've got Comp. It's been up there running big time. We've been trading that in the den. Uh, Maker eCash, uh, Bit, and this is Bit Dow uh, is 34%. Ave, good to see, is up there at 27%. Uh, Com was winning with 57%. Um, and Litecoin uh, running 20% in Litecoin, and we got a lot of long term holders in Litecoin. So uh, the monthly runners for the month so far. Uh, Bitcoin Cash has been the winner, um, 136%. Comp is 80. Uh, FTX, 49. Maker again at 45. Caspa, this is the one that uh, Nico just said. He's expecting a nice run on that, uh, 43%. And um, Pepe, the meme coin, is still hanging in there up on the top monthly runners for 40%. Okay, the biggest gainers and the highest volume for the week. So the gainers of the week are Comp, 55% Maker, eCash, BitDAO, Ave, and Litecoin. I take these from two different platforms so that I can see the uh, the comparison if there's a little bit different, than, um, but most of them are pretty much the same. The highest 24-hour volume, in the, and I take these on the day today. So this is the, what's going on now. XRP is right up there at the top. I, ha I had to redo it a couple times to make sure I was reading that right. XRP, 780 million in volume in the last 24 hours. Uh, Doge, 447. Uh, Solano, 318. Um, Ave, uh, 235. Tron, 150. And Comp is up there at 144 in volume. So I would have expected Comp to be up there a little bit higher on the list because it was the 55% top gainer of the week, um, but it's not for the last 24 hours. So as you can see, these, these are the players for the last 24 hours. Okay, now this is our other interesting little topic that we like to bring and share with you um, is EFTs. What are they? Okay, so I know that a lot of people, we've been talking about it. So I got to thinking, you know what? I think we should do a little dive deeper into it and uh, explain what the difference is between spot futures and what are EFT. So everybody can know and be very informed on this call if you're an MTT holder. Uh, ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund, which makes sense. They're funds that are traded on an open exchange. Okay, so ETF. So an ETF is an investment vehicle that will track the value of an underlying asset. ETFs can hold multiple assets and they're good for diversification. So they're really popular in the financial world. They can contain stocks, commodities, bonds, mixture of different investment vehicles. And a Bitcoin ETF, this is what we're all looking at now that the big hype going on in the crypto world, would expose investors to the cryptocurrency without the burden of physically buying and holding the digital asset. 
So when you get an EFT, you're relieved of the stress of understanding for all these people who don't even understand the crypto world, uh, the complexities of the crypto exchanges, the private keys, the crypto wallets, how to do it, buy it, sell it, whatever. They can invest in Bitcoin ETFs and they can get a piece of the pie. So what does this mean? They don't actually own the asset itself. So you need to understand that about ETFs. An ETF is a managed fund that can be bought or sold on an exchange, just like ASX or uh, CXA for Australians. Um, when you invest in ETF, you do not own the investment, but the provider of the ETF owns the asset. So what does that mean? If the provider is BlackRock, if the provider is Fidelity, if the provider is another financial institution like ARK, they're going to own the asset of the actual crypto. So think about this. If it is a Bitcoin EFT or ETF, I, I, I said EFT up at the top, it's exchange traded fund, it's ETF. I'll have to fix that typo, sorry. Um, but if they own it, they own the asset. So they're going to have to buy that asset if they don't already hold that asset. So that is why all the big hype and all of the big um, increase in Bitcoin lately is that if these ETFs uh, are approved by the SEC, then you know what's going to happen is all these big investors um, that want to hold these ETFs, um, they have to have a custodial account and they're going to have to have purchases of the, of the asset itself in order to provide the ETF fund for it. Um, so they will actually own the Bitcoin um, and you will own a unit in the ETF. So the value of the ETF will go up or down with the index of the asset that's being tracked. So as the price of Bitcoin goes up or down, the value of your ETF or your unit and purchase of it uh, will also go up and down and it will be an investment. I mean, it will be a financial vehicle uh, that you will be able to invest in as the Bitcoin goes up, so will your fund. So a spot of Bitcoin ETF directly tracks the price of Bitcoin, just like the other ones do. The commodities and the stocks track uh, whatever asset is, that they're tracking. Uh, the price will make it go up and down. Well, a futures Bitcoin ETF would allow the price of the asset futures contract. Now, there have been some approved for futures already. So the futures contracts are there, but it's the spot that we're really trying to get across and we're getting the spot trading in. So with all of the large financial institutions interested in the Bitcoin ETFs, this would mean Bitcoin is here for a long time, um, especially now that it's quite established. Uh, and this is what uh, the SEC is really struggling with is uh, the regulatory stuff that's around it, because, you know, they're the big bully right now in America and they not liking all this stuff going on and they're pushing against it, but there's too many people pushing for it. So at this time, Grayscale owns the world's largest Bitcoin fund and they are battling to get approval. So they've had to redo and redo and redo and, and lawsuits and everything else. But now they're we've got other players on board that are pushing the same thing because all these financial institutions want to bank in on the, the profits of the crypto world. So BlackRock has now filed um, and a win would open the doors to get others their clearance. So this is why we're watching this for you very, very closely. Uh, but I wanted to bring a little bit of uh, information to you so that you were really aware of when we talk about ETFs, what are ETFs? Now, you know, okay, it's an investment vehicle. So, um, you know, to, and this is why all the financial institutions want it because they get to keep the asset and then you get the, the unit of investment off of it and they could capitalize quite nicely off of it. Um, so they all must be believers in Bitcoin then. That's very, very positive. So let's get into Hoddle Knots is bringing you um, this wonderful little uh, screenshot that's going to be with your uh, report. So you'll be able to have it. But we've done an extensive search. Now, all of the ones in red, um, for those people who don't know yet and haven't heard the news, uh, KuCoin is now demanding KYC and they have to do this because they are not regulated in the United States. And so the SEC is being a big bully now again and they're demanding KYC. So now anybody that is in the United States that is on KYC is no longer going to be able to trade on it. So you have until July 15th in order to 
make a decision where to take your funds. Now, this is going to affect the liquidity of KuCoin big time. I can tell you that now. So everybody that has to have KYC and cannot trade because they're in, in the U.S., um, you, you and, and you know some people ask the question. Well, 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 Wendy, what about a VPN? Well, VPNs don't work. Okay, not when you have to have KYC because regardless of using uh, redirecting your area of where you're coming from, you still have to provide KYC. And KYC involves taking a photo uh, ID and you know not just your phone number, but usually they can pick up on your phone number where you're calling from but your email address, your phone number and your email address aren't necessarily KYC, but KYC comes in play when you have to provide um, a picture and you have to provide a formal document like a passport and a driver's license. So uh, if you are from the USA, you're not allowed because of the regulations. Uh, so we, we, we researched what are your options? What are the best options? Now, this is an unbiased opinion. Uh, coming from Bitcoin Trend and Forecast, but we did some research and this is what I found and this is what we're bringing to you, is that all of these over here in red, you're not allowed on either. <laughs> okay, so Gate.io, Polynex, uh, Binance.com, Pionex, Bybit, CEX, FTX, Blockfeed, Bitfinex, BitGet, uh, Huboy, OKX, KuCoin now is added to the list, Margex, Prime... EXBT and eToro, you're not, you can't do any of those. So if you want to go research them yourself, you can. I'm just saving you some time. So your alternate choices are Coinbase. Now, Coinbase, the thing you need to know about Coinbase is it has strong security. It's never been hacked. And it, but uh, um, on the con side of it is that it only has seven indicators and higher fees. So, but this is a very strong platform that a lot of Americans are using is Coinbase. It's been around for a long while. It's uh, based in San Francisco. Uh, and you can see we've done uh, a little quick search for you on which ones have a stop loss, which ones have to have KYC, which ones have staking, which ones have an NFT marketplace, which ones have Hike and Ashy Candles, because this is very important for Hoggle Knot, because uh, we use Hike and Ashy Candles, and then which ones are insured or not. Um, if they're blank, we couldn't find anything on it at the moment. But Kraken is another one uh, that is available to you, but it's not available in Washington State or New York. And a lot of these are not available in New York because it's highly regulated as well. Uh, so you will struggle if you live in New York. Um, it uses a trustly service for connection to bank accounts. And Australia, you have limited uh, access on Kraken for cryptos. I don't know why they don't want Australians to have them all, but you can have some of them. And I think that's a little strange. MEXT is the platform that the Hollow Knots is actually looking at. It's a very strong platform. Um, it's out of the seashells. Um, and it basically has everything. You do not have to KYC on MEXT, and it is available for USA. The only drawback I have on this one right now, and I put in a request, is they don't have Hike and Ashy Candles. And we trade with Hike and Ashy Candles. So you might want to rethink MEXC until they can provide Hike and Ashy Candles if that is important to you. If you trade with regular candles and candle patterns, you're good to go. Okay, it's a nice platform and it resembles Binance setup. Uh, Binance.us, everybody should be able to get on that, or at least most people can, except for Hawaii. Um, Texas, Vermont, and New York, uh, you cannot access Binance.us. I don't know why they discriminate against you guys as well, um, but they basically have everything that you need because they're similar to Binance. Gemini, we talked about that. That's the Vinkovos, uh twins. They're backed on this one. It's strong. It is in a lawsuit right now, so I have read some stuff, but uh, they were in a uh, partnership with another company and I forgot the name of it. Um, Genesis, Genos, I don't remember what it was, but they, there was another company that they're uh, having issues with um, because they locked up some of their funds. Um, and so anyway, just know that uh, it's in a, a Winklevoss invested platform. It's highly regulated. However, this platform is very strong in the United States, and there's a lot of whales and institutional investors that get on Gemini. So you, if you're looking for liquidity, and you got a lot of whales and institutional investors on there, the liquidity would be there. Uh, there just might be some slow trading if they're long-term holders. Uh, so that I haven't checked out the platform myself. 
I'm just giving you the news so you can make the decision. Uphold is a newer platform. Um, well, actually, it's been around since 2013, but it's newer to this particular area. What the really kind of thing is, it's not really like an exchange. Uh, it's more like an, an app that you can use that has lots of different coins on it. But it were, it's very easy to buy crypto on. So I signed up for an account for Uphold um, because for me in Australia, we, we have other platforms that we use here in order to get money or crypto in that are convenient with the banks here in order to buy crypto. Um, but they're really super high fees. So I was looking for another platform and this one may just be it. So Uphold is easy to buy crypto. It interacts really well with the banks and credit cards and things. And it does have a 16% APY staking option on it as well when you buy your crypto. So there's been a lot of really good feedback on that. So this one, the only thing is it's not like an exchange. So it doesn't have a stop loss. You just buy, you sell, you look at the market. But it's more, I think, for people who are not trading on a daily basis, um, you know, or at least on a short term. So crypto.com is out of Melbourne, Australia. Uh, this is an Australian exchange, but it is available for the USA, except for New York. You can't get on it. So they have high fee withdrawal fees. Okay, so high fiat withdrawal fees. So when you go to cash out with your fiat, uh, they charge you $25 to move it back into your bank account. So just know that crypto.com is a strong platform, though. Um, they have everything really that's needed. Um, you know, you, you do have to do KYC on most of these. You don't have to do KYC on MEXC. The other one that I really liked personally is BYDFI. Now, I did get on that exchange. I have an account. I made a quick $20 trade the other day, made some money on it. It's out of Singapore. Um, it doesn't have a stop loss on the exchange, which I couldn't figure out why, but they have it on their app. So they, it's very new platform. So you also have to understand that. But it got high ratings from Forbes. It was listed as one of the top 10 exchanges on Forbes. So if you make the Forbes list, um, that tells me that you're pretty strong. And the fact is, I'm sure that the stop loss will come in sooner or later for the exchange. But it's on the app, not the exchange. Uh, you don't have to do KYC for it either. So that was a, another added benefit for this particular exchange. And they did have high Ganeshi candles. So BitMEX is the uh, last one that I uh, actually looked at, is in seashells. Um, personally, you can do it in USA, yes for Canada, no to Ontario and Quebec. And they have something new on there called guilds. So if you want to figure out what guilds are, I didn't have time to research it, but they have these things that you can buy into or do things with guilds. Uh, if you know what that is, you can get on that platform. But this particular platform was a little bit, uh, iffy for me. I didn't like the exchange setup. You can move it all around and, and work on it, but it wasn't as user friendly as some of the others. And then Mandela was really kind of like the cloud or working copycat um, of Binance.com. Um, but they busted out a little bit away from Binance now because they're in the seashells in Malta. Um, you cannot get on this one in the USA or Ontario. Um, so this is why it's kind of in here with a different color is that for some other people, um, but you didn't have to have KYC on it. So some people say they can get, even though you can't get on it with USA or Ontario, there is a possibility because this one doesn't have KYC that some people are using VPNs. So if you use a VPN, um, you, they don't you don't do KYC on it so you could get on even if you were in USA or Ontario this is not advice it's just that I do know that some people are on Mandela because of the fact they don't have to KYC now you just have to give a phone number and you have to give an email address so um, that may be an option for you if you're a VPN holder but VPNs are costly they cost between 50 and 60 dollars a month and you really need it. The, the actual use of the VPN is for somebody like recently when I went to America um, and I was traveling and I took my laptop. When I got there, I couldn't get into my Binance.com account. Why? Because I was traveling through America and it's not allowed. So I got suspended on my account until I got back to Australia. 
Uh, so they pick up your IP address from wherever computer that you're using when you log into your account. And if they pick up an, an, a one that's not supposed to be there, you'll, you won't be able to get in. So we want to give you this list so that they can hopefully save you a little bit of time. I'll change that before Nico gives it out. And I'll change that uh, title right here to ETF so I know what I'm talking about. But Or at least I think I do. Or at least I try to. <laughs> But hopefully that gives you a little bit. Um, now, Mark says that MEXC is not available to New Jersey. Now, I haven't been able to find anything online that says that you can't get on it in New Jersey um, based upon your IP address. But, you, you know, you might struggle in some of these because of that. But thank you for that, Mark, adding that. Um I, I wasn't able to find anything when you when you go to Google e each one of these exchanges on restricted countries, you'll be able to find out whether yours is or isn't uh, included or if you're restricted in any way. But the best options that we're looking at, um, and we will do a poll at Hoddle Knots as well, and we'll bring you back that information in about a month from now. We want to see who moved where and when and where the liquidity is going. Because as you can understand that by July 15th, everybody's going to have to find another option. And that may affect the liquidity levels on KuCoin uh, just the same way it did in Binance. When Binance started restricting everybody, the, the liquidity levels went way down. So I do know that there's been some really good reports from both MEXC and from um, the DY. F1, uh, whatever that was, the initials were, I never can remember that one. Uh, somebody just said, say BYOB and you'll get it. <laughs> but it's BYDF or FD or something like that. Both of those two exchanges are really good. They look, they're very easy platforms. They look a lot like Binance to use. Um, I personally have both of those. And MEXC is launching a lot of new coins. And I understand that it's very similar like KuCoin when you get a platform that the fees are lower to launch your crypto on, you may see a lot of newer coins being launched on that as well. So that is one to watch. And I'll be watching both of those exchanges before I make a decision. If you know we move our bots or if we make some decisions on training on a different platform, because we don't want to leave our USA people behind. So hopefully that's some good information for you to uh, save you a little bit of time on your research, but do know you need to do something by the 15th of July and not get stuck. That's it yeah, for me. Thanks so much, Wendy. That was quite a mouthful. So, yeah, a lot of information mm. there. Um, very useful information is regarding the exchanges. Um, MEXC, we've been using and uh, I've been posting it in the reports too. If you don't know mm, yet, if you just go to the MTT reports. We've got a little American flag there with all the exchanges there. But I will also update the report according to what Wendy was okay, good. Found. 